Oh, it just seems to think the door right about now. Oh. Yeah, well, you're never too old to start, honey. Oh, that's what I love about you. You always support my dreams no matter how carcinogenic. <laughs> Oh, you stay tonight? I can't, Drew, not tonight. Sure you can. I wash the sheets and I use fabric softener. I gotta be at court early tomorrow. You can get there from here, I know. I've seen me do it. <laughs> yeah, rush hour. The Brooklyn and the George Washington are both down the two lanes. The Lincoln's closed and the batteries are friggin' mine now. Be easier to swim it. I promise I'll move to the east side tomorrow. In the meantime, plant your ass here tonight. Rude. Don't make me show you who's boss, Missy. <laughs> what kind of fabric's up there? Downy. Orange and magnolia blossom. Mm. <laughs> okay, boss. Mm. <laughs> Help me a roll, would ya? I need something to drink. Abby, I've been touching almost every inch of your body for two years now. I'm pretty sure I know what's under there. Mm -hmm. And my guess is that blind people interpret the world as being a lot more attractive than it actually is. <laughs> Which is why God invented imagination and denial. I dare you. <laughs> you tell me to walk. Stand up, take that robe off, and stand completely naked in front of me. Saw you naked? No. <coughs> Once. Do you want another drink? Uh, water's fine. Are we gonna talk about it? No. <laughs> Don't pout. I love you, Abby. I don't do that either. Oh, can you please make a list, counselor, of all the information that falls under privilege because I am tired of tripping over it. Like furniture, you keep moving when I'm not looking. <laughs> don't over-dramatize, Drew. My marriage isn't privileged information, it's ancient information. Well, I would have appreciated the privilege of hearing it. Why? Are you trying to make me feel like an asshole? Why do you feel like an asshole because you don't know the sort of details of something that happened 25 years Abby, everything I know about you I love, like, except your driving. <laughs> what I know, what I see, is so easy to love. I feel like an asshole because there are times it's like loving a picture that fell out of an unlabeled photo album. How can we even consider getting married? Uh, someday, consider it someday. You never thought of marrying me. Slip your favorite snack food. You knew his name. No, dear, I didn't. I knew nothing of your marriage. We were high school sweethearts. We got married the summer before I started law school. We were married a year and a half before he killed himself. Was there any. Oh, my favorite snack food is Little Debbie Cake Swiss Rolls. <laughs> Dare I ask what he was like? Young and tender heart. Did you love him? But you never thought of marrying anyone else? I didn't see the point. You didn't see the point of marriage, or you didn't see the point of thinking about it? One implies the other. I'd say, why do you want to get married? Because I liked being married, didn't you? I don't remember, Drew. I was 22. 22 year olds get married because. They want to merge minimum wage incomes. They want to get away from their parents. They want to have sex in a queen-size bed. Take off their clothes, <laughs> stand naked in front of their husbands. Will you stop with that? <laughs> you 
like being married so much. Why did you get divorced? Ah, uh, Paige couldn't forgive me for Nikki's death. She tried like hell, but she couldn't. You said Nikki died in the forest. Mm-hmm. You weren't driving, were you? No, but I was the one that was supposed to pick him up that day. I went golfing instead. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to pry. Oh, I'm sorry. You never mean to pry. My bank teller knows more about Nikki than you do. Hey, I... You never ask about him, Abby. Ever. All you know is how he died, and you're practically swallowing your tongue changing a subject after I shared that information with you. Well, I don't remember that. I don't know, I figured it was a hard subject to talk about. Yeah, for who? Abby, Nikki was this amazing, funny, brilliant kid who filled up every day of my life for seven years. You never asked me one question about it. Okay. So tell me something about Nikki. Something even your back to it. Okay. His first grade teacher always called him Saint Nick. Because he was always, at, oh, that whole year before he died, making and wrapping little presents for all the other kids in his class. And hiding them all over the classroom, writing their names on the wrapping paper. <coughs> Everyone knew the presents were from him, but whenever the kids would say, oh, thank you, Nick, he'd go, oh, it's not me, it's Santa Claus, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and then laugh and laugh and laugh. Oh, God, Paige, I marvel at that kid. How long were you married after you died? Nine months. Did you try seeing a marriage counselor? Uh, no, but at my wife's urging, we did go and see her priest, Father Chuck. <laughs> I asked him if God could ever forgive a father who got his only son killed. And then I realized, well, I just asked a Catholic priest and laughed like hell. Uh, he waited for me to finish laughing without cracking a smile. And then he assured me that God had already forgiven me. Did you believe that? Yeah. I went to church once. Church? You went into a church? Yes, Drew. <laughs> of course, us Lutherans don't believe in the whole confession thing, but oh, I got in my head this one day. I needed post-mortem absolution, so I drove across town. I saw enough to our lady of sorrows trying to look Catholic. <laughs> and I stood at the entrance practicing what I was going to say. <laughs> So I finally got the courage to walk into the little confessional booth there. <coughs> Why did you confess? Well, nothing. <coughs> <coughs> I sat there waiting, and finally someone came and gave, gave the little light knock on the door. Not the sliding door, the door door. I don't know, at first I panicked. My youth were in activity. <laughs> so I just waited there. I don't know what I was thinking or whoever it was, only knew I was in there. It looks like I could pretend that I didn't hear the knock. <laughs> <laughs> Do my stupid face. <laughs> I just sat there mortified. <laughs> Finally, after they knocked again, I, I cracked the window open and as nonchalantly as I could, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever it was was like, uh, I'm sorry, confession hours are over for today. <laughs> Apparently it's not like a 7 11 or anything. <laughs> so I replied, Oh, I know. <laughs> and then I closed the door with me still inside. <laughs> you want to confess? That my husband had seen me standing in front of him completely naked. 
Okay, I'm sorry I asked. I'm sorry, and fuck you too. What the fuck? Abby, don't you know that there is nothing you could say? I'm physically incapable of loving you any less. Please don't say oh, that. Oh, please don't say that. Why? You don't believe me? No, because I don't want to believe you. Unconditional love isn't all that's cracked up to be. You're wrong. No, I'm not. You know, it'll be great right now, Abby, if I knew what the fuck we were talking about. <laughs> I came out of the bathroom and I ran naked straight into him. I didn't know he was going to be there. He wasn't supposed to be there. I'm sorry, you genuinely thought that was a sin? I didn't know he was going to be there. Alan didn't know he was going to be there. Who was Alan? Twenty-five years since my last attempted confession. I've said the Lord's name in vain a zillion times, and I fucked my constitutional law professor because when he said my name, my hair went up. Had you fallen out of love with Jake? God no. Were you unhappy in your marriage? Never. Then... <coughs> if I knew that... The sex was quick and horrible. And I think I started crying before he even finished. When it was over, I... I jumped out of the bed, I ran straight to the bathroom, and I just kept crying. And then suddenly I, I heard the door go, and I couldn't decide if it was Alan leaving or Jake coming home, so, so I crawled across the floor to the door, sat on the tiles. nothing. So all, I, all I could think to do was just close my eyes and run full speed out of the bathroom, at which point I ran, still naked, straight into Jake, who was standing over and also still naked, Ellen, in our bed. What did he do? Uh, yeah. He looked at Alan, and then he looked at me, and then at Alan again, before, back and forth. It's like the truth was slowly creeping up on him. You know, like that word sensation you get in a car accident? His muscles were seeming to stiffen at once, and he looked back at me once more, his gaze locking with my eyes. I was paralyzed. Did you think he was going to hit you? God, no, no. Oh, Jake couldn't hurt a mosquito, no. Oh, his eyes were filled with rage. Ever been deer hunting? No. <laughs> okay. So my favorite uncle, Uncle Gus. Yeah. Every Saturday of the season, he used to take his, he used to go bow hunting for deer. Because hunting was the merciful thing to do for the deer, lest they should starve slowly and painfully in the winter. <laughs> Quicker is kinder, he'd always say. <laughs> So one time I asked him if I could go with him, and he said, no, honey, you little prissy gals. Well, from that point on, I was determined to make him take me with me, to prove to him that I was neither little nor prissy. <laughs> Finally, after my 11th birthday, he agreed to take me. <laughs> we got there at the crack of dawn, and I don't know what felt like an eternity when my uncle put up his hand to Yeah. 
split seconds while he was loading his bow. He simply fell in love. I just wanted to pet him and hold him and play with him. If I couldn't do that, I just wanted to scream it into love. It's just standing there and I had all the time in the world to make some noise. My uncle was drawing his arrow and taking his aim. All I could do was close my eyes, hold my breath, and hope to God he missed. Next thing I know, the deer's on his side, gasping for hours, with arrows sticking out of his side. When he got closer, it was them moving. Except for his eyes. The eyes were just following me, tracking me. Big, enormous brown eyes filled with absolute. What happened? <coughs> I kept thinking, well, there's hardly any blood at all. He's okay, really. And, and we, could, we could load him into the truck and take him back to my mom, and she could, she could pull out the splinter, the arrow, like she did all my splinters, and, and then she could put some hydrogen <coughs> peroxide on it. And, and then we could take him to a petting zoo, and, and he wouldn't have to suffer starvation. And I was feeling so much better about that decision. I couldn't believe it when my uncle took out a shotgun. <laughs> then I screamed. I was crying and grabbing his arms so we couldn't get a steady shot. Abby, you've got to be a big girl now. Remember what I told you, that deer's going to die either way. Quicker is kinder. Remember? I took one last look into that animal. I let go of his arm, I, I sat down on the ground, I put my knees into my chest. And a few seconds later, I heard the shot. And that was that. I meant what happened in the bedroom with Jake. <laughs> him and shoving him as hard as I could to get him out of the bedroom and into the hallway. I remember quicker is kind of. What did he do? He sat down in the hallway and started crying like a little boy. He grabbed my arm, tears rolling down his face. He choked out. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Over and over again. It's okay. He must have loved you very much. Yeah. Yeah, unconditionally. What did you do? I pulled my arm out of his hands. I closed the door in his face. And that was that. You're human, Abby. Humans make mistakes. It wasn't a mistake, Drew. I didn't lose my key. Okay, <laughs> so it was a shitty decision. Your whole marriage was not that one shitty decision. Don't you think you deserved his forgiveness? Deserved it? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I probably did deserve it. Okay.
to God's clemency. Make it easier for you when your son was killed while you were busy teeing off. What if Paige had found a way to forgive you? Would that have eased your conscience every morning when you woke up with that same sickening realization? So. Because it doesn't work out like that, does it? If only. They don't teach you that in Sunday school, do they? That if you don't get punishment here on earth, that it never ends. <coughs> Mercy isn't benevolent. It's crushing. Just come here. I need permission from you to love you no matter what. Could have been great together. 